find a niche um, that you are good at and understand what you're really, really good at. Ensure that not only are you good at it, but people will pay for that kind of service. Outsourcing economy gains momentum. Businesses and individuals alike are recognizing the immense value freelancers bring to the table. Welcome to the Design Rush Podcast, where we bring you game changers and innovators who can help drive your business forward. I'm your host and senior editor at Design Rush, Bianca Mayer. Shaping the way freelancers and businesses connect, our guest for today is an exceptional leader in the gig economy space. He's the UK country manager for Fiverr, a leading platform for freelancers worldwide. Please welcome to the show, Buki Aredapo. You've obviously held various roles, like growth associate, growth leader, and even a growth mentor. So how have these experiences, would you say, shaped your leadership style and approach to driving growth as Fiverr's UK country manager? For sure. Well, yeah, firstly, thank you for having me on. Um, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, and I think my kind of experiences um, shaped the way that I think about things. So, of course, I've had very growth orientated roles. So um, growth is, uh, you know, one of the first things I think about when thinking about any projects or, or tasks that I'm working on. And from a kind of, I guess, leadership and management perspective, uh, what I've really learned is that ultimately people want to have kind of control and a sense of autonomy. Um, uh, and so do I. So uh, I feel like that's really important to give people actual control, not just to say that I want you to take this on, but to give them uh, responsibility, uh, particularly as people get uh, more advanced in their career. So uh, the earlier on you are in your career, the more you need a little bit more guidance uh, versus if you've been doing something for 10 years, you probably need a little bit less guidance. And then also the amount of time that you've been in a particular role. Day one, you need a heck of a lot of guidance, kind of a year on, uh, less so. Yeah, exactly. So could you walk me through some of the things that you as a growth manager would do for someone just starting out in their career? For sure. So it's very much a data driven uh, kind of marketing and, and growth strategies that you're looking at. So it always starts with the, the data, whether that's quantitative or qualitative. So analyzing uh, this data, uh, copious amounts of data, and then from that data determining uh, actionable insights. Uh, that you can then go on to to do something to whether it would drive uh, revenue growth or, or maybe cut costs or improve uh, customer satisfaction, all with the ultimate aim of growing the business. Um, so that's ultimately what, what a growth manager does. Okay, cool. So what would you say were the biggest adjustments you had to make when stepping into the role of Fibers UK con uh, country manager? And how did you approach these challenges? I think the, the biggest adjustment for me is uh, I, I've come from the realm of startups, so I've typically worked at early stage startups and uh, the opportunity at Fiverr was uh, one that I couldn't pass up on. Uh, it felt like a, a business that still thinks like a startup or a scale-up, but clearly has the track record uh, of, a, of a large business, you know, with it being publicly traded and, and everything. So um, that was why I took the role, but I think the biggest adjustment was the fact that we might think like a startup at Fiverr, but we're of course not a startup. And being publicly traded means that we have uh, certain, um, I guess, uh, restrictions and, and certain things that we have to be um, uh, accountable for, some people we have to be accountable to. Uh, so it can take a lot longer to get things done, um, just given the sheer size of the business. So um, that was probably the biggest adjustment. Um, you know, at startups, I could get uh, and from ideation through to execution, that could, could literally be an afternoon. Uh, which obviously doesn't uh, work in uh, Fiverr. Uh, so the biggest adjustment was really having to try and plan ahead uh, several weeks in advance, um, which uh, I didn't necessarily have to do as much in previous roles. And uh, that was probably the biggest adjustment. And um, second, uh, and, and it meant that um, sometimes there might be a certain initiative or a certain partnership uh, in which they needed an answer within a week and it just meant that we had to say no a bit more often. So I think planning ahead and saying no uh, more often. And how did you approach saying no? Actually, that would be an interesting one to know. Like, I know it's so hard for people in business or in any sort of industry to say no to people. So how is it that you navigate that word? 
Yeah, it, it can be difficult. Um, I think the, the most important thing is always to give a, a justification, um, whether that's, um, you know, due to the current macro environment or it's due to internal constraints and, and be apologetic. You know, you, you, you never, uh, you, you should never be afraid to say sorry. Um, so that's, that's really um, the best way to approach it in a kind of humane way. Okay like that um okay so we also know that you have been a producer at the national museum of wales can you tell us a little bit more about that work that you do there and how you contribute to the museum's mission and initiatives yeah for sure so uh this working this is a slight um i guess uh, it, it's slightly different to the work i do in my day job um this is something that it's part of my kind of lifelong ambition to have cultural impact as well as commercial impact that I kind of have in my career. Um, and the National Museum of Wales is one of many museums that are now uh, starting to be interested in looking back at the way they've told history. And, you know, when you think about history, you think it's kind of facts and figures, which it is, but it's also just stories, stories from the past. And they're always from or they're typically from a particular perspective and that's usually those in power so um what the museum uh, is looking to do is to kind of tell stories from different perspectives and kind of give a holistic view of what's happened in the past so that people today can make their minds up with uh, the full uh, the full story the full narrative from different perspectives so uh, I've, I've been helping the the museum to do that uh, with some things um, to do with uh, Trinidad and um, kind of the transatlantic slave trade, um, and it's been a it's been some very interesting work, and how that affects my I guess my day job and what I do when it comes to kind of being a country manager. Um, it really just helps to uh, help me to recognize that the most important thing, kind of in building a business in 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 build, talking about yourself, uh, in building your personal brand, whatever it is, it's really about telling stories. You're telling the story of the service you're selling. You're telling the story of yourself as an individual when you're meeting somebody for the first time. And the way you frame that story, the way you tell that story uh, has a significant impact on the way that people um, walk away from that experience. Absolutely. I absolutely love how you just put that, really. Uh having a brand and maybe even being yourself as a brand or for a business it's about telling stories i love that it's amazing so um what are some of the projects or exhibitions that you've been involved in that you're particularly proud of when you were when you are working at the museum yeah so it was um it's one that i've done with them so far but it took several years to get that um to to execute that and it was uh, an exhibition that kind of centered around uh, a general uh, who was called Sir Thomas Picton. Uh, he's from Wales and he uh, died in the Battle of Waterloo um, and was uh, kind of heralded as a hero, which, you know, he did do some heroic things, but unfortunately he committed some, um, some atrocious things as well. So we just told the full picture and we launched that on um, uh, Independence Day, Trinidad's Independence Day, uh, August 1st uh, last year. Um, because he was also a general in Trinidad, even though he was from Wales. So um, I think that's probably what I'm most proud of and really putting that story out there, the full story. We're not trying to change the, the past where, you know, he did good things, he did bad things. And we're just putting that out there for everybody to see and um, take away what they want to take away from it. Exactly. I think it's really important in work like this that you do um, to really give people a full picture. You know, it's easy to just focus on the nice things you know, when it comes to history specifically or anything really for that matter, it's easy to focus on that. But I think, you know, there's certain, you know, people I think also appreciate authenticity and you're right. I think people should hear the full story so that they can also take away from that what they want to. Um, yeah, I like that. Yeah. So um, could you maybe share also any specific examples where your experiences as a producer has influenced your work at Fiverr? Yeah, I think um, one of the places where it's really influenced my work is uh, about, we can talk about branding, I guess. So uh, yeah. coming back to this idea of telling stories, uh, the way, the words you use, the way you articulate things uh, is really important. So um, Fiverr, we, uh, 
you know, provides what we do. We exist to revolutionize the way the world works together. And we connect millions of businesses and freelancers together across the world. And um, in the UK and generally globally, certain people have maybe an outdated idea of what we've done in the past. So what we've really been looking to do um, and, you know, that uh, that perception is probably that you come to Fiverr just for cheap and simple tasks, um, which that hasn't been the case for several years. You can come to Fiverr and do complex things that can cost thousands of pounds. So uh, articulating that in a way that we think will resonate with the audience has been one of my key takeaways, because going back to this point of stories, like the way you frame things, the way you word things, the language you use, um, the visuals you use, that's really important in um, articulating the message that you want to get across and that was by far the biggest takeaway you use one word one word incorrectly in a sentence uh and it, it, there could be a public freak out right so uh, you've got to be very careful with the way with the words you use and the way you frame things from a cultural perspective and a commercial perspective when it comes to fire 100 percent. so it's all just about storytelling 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 basically um uh, yeah yeah 100%. So, um, I'd like to get more towards like the gig economy that you speak about as well. So, um, for our listeners who might not be too familiar with the term, could you explain what the term gig economy is and why it's become so important in today's job market? Yeah, so at Fiverr, uh, we, we say we're part of the freelance economy as opposed to the gig economy. Uh, and okay. in contrast to, to the gig economy, um, on Fiverr, freelancers can decide uh, when they want to work, where they want to work, and they set their prices. Um, so we we see that there's significant growth in this desire to be a part of this freelance economy from the younger generation, particularly Gen Z, but also with you know our generation and older people are looking to have autonomy and control, and that's why uh, we uh, in particular say that we're part of the freelance economy versus say the game economy. Okay. So as someone who is obviously deeply involved in this like freelance economy rather than gig economy, what do you see as the major advantages and challenges of freelancing as a career choice? Yeah, I think one of the ma major advantages is uh, being your own boss. You control your schedule, um, you work when you want to, where you want to, as I mentioned, and you kind of have flexibility to, to, to a certain extent. So. Um, that's one of the major things and we've seen, uh, particularly uh, since COVID, um, you know, it was a traumatic time for many, but it was and then life change, life changing period for a lot of people as well. Um, and people generally decided they wanted to take control. We released a survey uh, last year that illustrated that 50% uh, of people choose to be freelancers to, to be their own boss. So that's by far one of the, the major advantages. Now, the challenge is also with being your own boss. You've got nobody to tell you when to work, what to do. When you, when you, you, know, you say you want to have control, you've got full control, but you have to actually manage your schedule. Um, you have to manage your time appropriately. You have to decide what to prioritize, when to prioritize things. Um, and you know, that comes with a certain level of, um, of expectation and, and stress as well. Exactly. Yeah, sure, exactly. Um, yeah, I think there's a certain amount of setting up a routine and finding a balance, especially as a freelancer, that you absolutely have to hone in on for sure. Um, so let's say in the context of the UK, how have you witnessed this freelance economy grow and impact the job landscape? Like, were there any trends or patterns that have emerged in recently? Yeah, absolutely. So again, post COVID, we saw that uh, I think around f from the same survey, almost 40% of people decided to become a freelancer at that point because it was such a life changing period. And this is within the UK. So we've seen the, a strong growth in the freelance economy. We're also seeing with Gen Z, with the next generation, uh, a significant proportion of people want to be freelancers they want to work um, when they want to where they want to and this is uh, you know we've seen this this was happening anyway but i think covid really caused that transition um or exacerbated that transition um so that's that's pretty huge in the uk um and then specifically we've seen certain services grow extremely fast uh within the uk so um, website development, it's always been popular, but it's been particularly popular over the last year. We released um, a business index, which illustrates some of the 
based on the millions of transactions that we have on the platform, which illustrates some of the most popular and growing uh, services. So that's one. AI services, of course, it's a, it's a buzzword. It's a very popular word right now, but that's growing very fast as well. So within the UK, we've seen a lot of these things happen um, uh, over the past couple of years. And then, you know, other macro environment um, uh, challenges have, have caused people to really consider freelancing as a, as a career, such as the inflationary crisis, the cost of living crisis. Um, so these are things that we're seeing within the UK specifically. Absolutely. So, okay, in that same breath, um, how do you think business or businesses are responding to this need for people wanting to freelance? Yeah, so some businesses are doing it very well. They're allowing people to be a bit flexible and, and kind of have a bit more autonomy with when they work and where they work. Some people are struggling a little bit. Some businesses are struggling a little bit. But what we're generally seeing, especially going back to this kind of um, this, it, we're in a very unpredictable times. The macro environment is very uncertain. So we're seeing that businesses are choosing to, rather than necessarily hire full time, they're looking to scale their uh, their talent up and down uh, through free through freelancing um, through people who want to freelance. Right. So um, as they need more people to work on more complex projects, they take on more freelancers, and as they need maybe uh, less help, they can scale that down. So that's definitely something that we're seeing in this current time, which is why we think Fiverr and platforms like us are, are quite a good solution for that, because we make it as simple as possible to, to scale that up and down. Amazing. Okay. So obviously Fiverr is widely recognized as the leading platform for freelancing. Um, can you share what the mission is of Fiverr and how it supports freelancers in the UK? Yeah, so uh, our mission is to revolutionize how the world works together. Uh, and of course, we do this by connecting millions of businesses and freelancers together across the world. Um, for freelancers in particular, we, we of course, provide this platform. We make it quite easy to connect with uh, millions of businesses across the world. Over 4 million businesses bought on our platform last year. Um, and I think one of the main benefits that we have, that we not just provide for freelancers and businesses is this idea of trust. Um, so it's very difficult to trust somebody from halfway around the world, from a country that you've never been to, uh, somebody that you've never spoken to, um, without some kind of intermediary, some kind of third party facilitating that relationship. And that's what Fiverr does. So um, we hold the funds until it's approved um, and both sides are kind of happy to, to complete that transaction. Um, so that so you can trust in the platform and by trusting in the platform, you can build that relationship and, and trust the person on the other end. So that's one way. And then another way that we're really trying to support freelancers, um, we consider freelancers our community. We call them our community because without freelancers, Fiverr just wouldn't exist. So we have an internal team called our community team of full-time employees that just focus on trying to provide our freelancers with tools, resources to become better freelancers and to become better people and then putting on free events, both online and offline, to uh, foster camaraderie amongst our community and, uh, again, provide advice and tips. But that camaraderie point is actually one of the, the key points, um, this idea of really creating a community. Because freelancing, depending on what type of freelancing you do, can be, can be quite lonely. Um, you know, you may not have a team. You kind of work with uh, a client who's halfway around the world, uh, and it can be quite lonely. So a lot of freelancers, they... Um, from the events that we've put on, they've come to me and they said, look, we love that you put on these events. Uh, yes, we learn a lot of things, but we also just get to connect with um, other people um, who are in the same boat as us. A hundred percent. I think, you know, that's just as important. I understand a hundred percent wanting to be your own boss or, you know, being in charge of your own schedule. But I think we're still human beings and we need that human connection with in all aspects of our lives. And I think especially in our careers, it helps us grow at the end of the day, I think too. Um, so, okay. Outsourcing has obviously become quite an increasingly popular um, thing in the freelance economy. So how do you see the rise of freelancing platforms like Fiverr impacting the outsourcing landscape? Yeah. So. Uh Organizations, they're, they're more willing to take on freelancers, um, especially for more complex things, which maybe wasn't the case several years ago. Um, and Fiverr, I think the impact that we're having is that we're helping to 
transition into this new world of work where more people are kind of their own autonomous agents freelancing for businesses and it comes back to this trust point um you know it, it, again it's very difficult to trust someone you've never worked with before um which is why often people go through family and friends um to find freelancers but by coming to this platform and ensuring that we are the platform that you can trust in you know we're publicly listed on the new york stock exchange um we're a large organization we make sure that we hold the funds until um the client has approved uh, and then we immediately pay um or, well within 14 days we pay the freelancer but it's always on time that helps to facilitate uh, and continue gender trust um which would be very difficult you know when if you've got a client that's paying late all the time and you've never met the client yeah. before so that's really the key point really trying to foster that trust okay that's that's pretty cool so i don't know if you know this but design rush has a directory of the top agencies worldwide so what do you think are the advantages of outsourcing and why is it important for companies to do that do you think yeah so for sure i think um one one of the main points one of the main advantages is <clears throat> focus so by outsourcing uh things that are outside of your core competency that are on the periphery of that core competency you can focus on what you do best yes. and do that to your best of your ability whilst you outsource what somebody else does best and you maybe don't do so well so um that's number 1 and then number 2 is flexibility um so in times of um when things are really really busy and you need an expert to get up to speed really quickly you can hire somebody um who's freelancing and outsource to 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 meet the demand and when things are a little bit quieter you can scale that back down so that flexibility point is is super important as well love that yeah exactly those are fantastic points actually so okay let's get back to more branding and marketing specifically in the UK so obviously branding and positioning play a super crucial role in the success of any platform So how does Fiverr approach branding and how has it influenced its growth? So um we're a community first platform. Um mm-hmm. as I mentioned like our, our community they're everything to us so it's very important that we that we emphasize this uh, and we make this very well known. Um and then when it comes to branding it's very important for us to put out a clear message to the market um of who we are, what we stand for. um what we do as a business um our values so that's something that we try to ensure uh that we do uh and um, that's super important because <clears throat> if, if your messaging is unclear it can have a detrimental impact on growth in the long term so having that clear message that we put out to the market um is super important so that's uh that's probably that's what we do 100% so okay again when it comes to the UK market specifically How does Fiverr tailor its marketing strategy to resonate with the local freelancers and clients? For sure. Um so historically we've actually had um a hero brand campaign um that was quite US centric uh, and after the fact we would then localize it to our different um international markets, the UK, uh Germany, etc. and mm-hmm. for the first time this year we've actually decided that the best approach is to start from the ground up with something that is specific uh to the market um so within the UK this is the first time that we've done this and what we did is rather than take uh, that hero campaign and localize it after the fact we started with a UK uh, agency with you know British talent and recorded uh right here in um in sunny london so to really ensure that uh what we're doing is tailored to the UK audience because i think there's this misconception i think from people who may be on from either the US or the UK that you know we speak the same language essentially apart from with a few more s's in the UK a few more z's in the US but the language is pretty much the same um yeah. and that you know you can have the same marketing message for both but actually the the culture is is quite different um, Uh, between the US, UK and the US so that's why we thought that this is it's very important that we actually build from the ground up and create a a campaign a production that is specific and it's tailored to the UK and it has UK the British sense of humor um yeah. British accents of course and all, and all of that so that's really really important it's subtle but it, it makes a difference 
No, 100%. I was actually just thinking that when, when you were saying, yeah, you know, people say that it's basically the same just because of language, apart from a few pronunciation things, right? But it's not really about that. It is about the UK I th or the British humor. I mean, that is one of the things that make the, the Brits stand out, right? It's like the humor is fantastic. So, and there are like these sort of nuances that you have to use and like really tailor for every country that you're branding to. Um, for sure. Just, and I like, I think, yeah, and I, I think, um, you know, we, we think that this is the right approach and, you know, it's early days. So we only launched this TV campaign uh, last month. Um, so we'll see how it performs um, when we look at the quantitative data, uh, but qualitative, qualitatively we're, we're happy with it and we've already received kind of a, a small accolade or, that we're quite proud of um from david review um which is one of the uh, i wouldn't say small but like one of the biggest uh, advertising press pre press outlets in the uk uh, got pick of the day which i guess is a small award but we're pretty happy with it and you know we hope that we'll get many more to come of course yeah congratulations that's awesome any Thank i you. think it works is fantastic it's really nice sure. yeah. that recognition is, is so nice so Absolutely. okay um, from your experience, what are some of the key insights into the UK's market, consumer behavior and preferences when it comes to freelancing and uh, freelance services? Yeah, so the UK is one of the most advanced markets when it comes to understanding, when it comes to awareness and then understanding of um, platforms such as Fiverr. Um, so, what I mean by that is that there's a decent percentage of the population of the business population in particular that will go to a platform to find freelance talent. However, it's still got a long way to go. Um, we'd still say that our largest competitor is um, kind of just word of mouth, your personal network. So the vast majority of people will still go through a friend, colleague, family member who they trust to find freelance talent. Um, and, and it all comes down to this idea of trust. Um, so we've still got a long way to go, but the UK is definitely one of the most advanced countries. Um, you've got a significant proportion who know about platforms and use platforms, but nowhere near the majority. Okay, that's really interesting to know, actually. Okay, so in a previous interview, you mentioned the importance of understanding that the audience does uh, is not equal in the community. Yeah, the audience and community, they're definitely not the same um kind of audience is really like this um it, it's one way it's it, it's from brand or prominent individual prominent organization to many uh whereas community is really a conversation it's many to many if you think of it as a spider web of conversation um in if you're when talking to an audience you kind of own that um the narrative because it's one way really Whereas in a community, you don't own the narrative, you, you can only facilitate that conversation. So um, it's important to put a strong message out there. And then uh, it's always important, but particularly with the community, it's important to put a strong message out there uh, and stand by what you do. So say something and your actions need to meet what you say. Otherwise, uh, that's a recipe for disaster. Okay. So can you tell us also what distinguishes a community from like a mere audience and why it's essential for businesses to take that or make that distinction? Yeah, so the key distinction is um, audience one to many and then community kind of many to many. Um, and it's important that you understand that distinction and uh, if possible, you know, community is uh, a great, a great channel to grow your your brand and raise awareness and, and ultimately um, improve perception of your business if it makes sense community doesn't make sense for all businesses it definitely makes sense for ours hence why we have such a focus on it um, so it's important to recognize do you even need to have a community and if you do then um, you need to invest in it for the long haul um, you know uh, it's not a short-term game and you, you can't um, measure ROI in the immediate term um, so it's something to invest for the long haul that will have a, a significant impact on your uh, on your brand perception, which of course is difficult to measure. You can use sentiment analysis, but um, it's a long term. It's very long term. Exactly. I mean, I, I remember you did mention something uh, that long, it's a long term commitment. So can you just list a few benefits 
of long-term community investment? Yeah, so I mean, one of the main benefit is that if you do it right, you create evangelists, right? So people who will go out into the market and profitize about your brand um, on your behalf without um, compensation, just because they've had a great experience with, with your brand. Um, and then the second is that you get great, you get feedback. Um, and that feedback is, you know, positive, which is, which means that you're doing stuff good, but you also get constructive feedback because these people are, these people are so passionate about your business. So we were at London tech week, um, earlier this week exhibiting, um, and, uh, it, it was great for us to exhibit for multiple reasons. And one of the reasons was that we, um, had a lot of people who would come to our stand one, just to tell us that they love Fiverr. They, loved working on Fiverr either as freelancers or as a business and that was great to hear. But we also got some really good constructive feedback on uh, what we can improve and what we can do better um, for the community or for the business if, if they're a, kind of a, a customer on the platform. Um, and you know, if, it, if it's a brand that if people don't really care about your brand, they're not really going to give you feedback, whether it's positive or negative. Um, but if they really love, if they have a, if they resonate with your brand, uh, they want to see you do well, they'll, they'll give you positive and negative feedback. So that's super important as well. So those two things. That is, that's very cool. Okay. So finally, Buki, what advice or tips would you give to our listeners who may be considering freelancing or exploring, exploring opportunities in the freelancing industry? Yeah. So, um, a few tips. I think the first thing is really understand your, find a niche um that you are good at and understand what you're really really good at and then of course understand ensure that not only are you good at it but people will pay for that kind of service uh that's the first thing once you've done that uh, it's about creating a portfolio whether you put that portfolio on fiverr or somewhere else creating a portfolio that is visual as visual as possible even if you're not in a visual um in a visual space such as website design um trying to make it visual because we're, we're quite generally we're quite visual beings as human beings so make it as visual as you can and describe what you've done as well as possible so if you are on fiverr a visual portfolio very descriptive with keywords that you think people will search for the type of people uh, the type of people that you want as customers of your of your service and um, that's really really important so that's definitely what i'd start with and then finally is illustrating your track record, which is kind of through the portfolio, but anybody who's prominent as a client that you've had in the past. Um, so that's really, really important. And if you haven't had clients in the past, then um, kind of creating a portfolio from scratch, just illustrating what you can do um, so that you can show this to the world and, you know, somebody um, will take a chance on, uh, on, on your work. A hundred percent. I love that. Can you give people, um, a few platforms where they could create such an online portfolio is that maybe on fiverr or anywhere else yeah for sure i'd, I'd, I'd have to say that the number one place i'd recommend of course i'm biased uh, is fiverr but i also think that having a, a prominent uh, linkedin is really important uh, as well depending on your, on your niche um so those are probably the two that I, i'd recommend starting with okay perfect thank you so much Buki. thank you so so much for joining us today it was an absolute pleasure talking with you um, thank you for having me. Absolutely. That's, that's really great. Thank you. It's a pleasure to speak with you too. And that's a wrap for today's episode. If you're looking for not just a freelancer, but a team of experts, we've got you. Visit designrush.com slash marketplace. Our marketplace offers a curated selection of agencies that can provide the solutions you need to turn your dream project into a reality. Again, I'm your host, Bianca Mayer. Stay curious and join us for the next episode.